Good morning, distinguished guests, families, and friends of the Master Leader Course, Class 003-23. On behalf of the Henry H. Lynn Non-Commissioned Officer Academy and Deputy Commandant Master Sergeant Norberto Morales, welcome to today's graduation ceremony. Today's official party consists of Master Sergeant Norberto Morales, Deputy Commandant of the Henry H. Lynn Non-Commissioned Officer Academy, Sergeant Major Lavon D. Brown, the Support Operations Sergeant Major for the 593rd Expeditionary Sustainment Command, and First Sergeant Noel K. Fry, First Sergeant of the Henry H. Lynn Non-Commissioned Officer Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the invocation and the playing of the National Anthem. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together as a class, despite our backgrounds, MOS, or duty status. We thank you for the opportunity to learn from one another and to hone our skills as senior non-commissioned officers. We thank you for the dedication and commitment of the MLC facilities and the staff who participated with us in this stage of our NCOPDS. As we return to our units, set within us, Lord, the fire to serve this nation as we fulfill our charge to be professionals, non-commissioned officers, leaders. Please be seated. The Master Leader course was designed to prepare senior non-commissioned officers for positions of greater responsibility and aims to develop the professional skills and competencies required of Master Sergeants in the 21st century. This is accomplished with a rigorous learning environment designed to teach each student on all essential aspects of performance for the increased leadership and management responsibilities required of senior non-commissioned officers. These graduates have completed a demanding 14-day course which will enhance their professional abilities as senior non-commissioned officers. Additionally, they will assist the Henry H. Lynn Non-Commissioned Officer Academy and the Army as we formalize this significant NCO progression and education gateway. It is now my honor to introduce the Deputy Commandant of the Henry H. Lynn Non-Commissioned Officer Academy, Master Sergeant Norberto Morales. Good morning, Command Sergeant Major Scarborough, Command Teams, friends and families of the Henry H. Lean NCO Academy and the Master Little Course Class 003-23. I would first like to congratulate the graduating class of 23 diverse, unique senior leaders gathered here today. Please join me in a round of applause for our graduating class. Additionally, I would like to recognize our exceptional facilitators who have helped shape these future leaders. Please put your hands together for our, our outstanding MLC facilitators as well. Thank you. <laughs> oh.
Over the past 14 days, the senior NCOs were challenged to curb their direct leadership ways of thinking and asked to evolve into leaders capable of thinking about leadership at the organizational and even strategic levels. For many of them, this course was their introduction to joint planning and staff functions at the senior level. Class 003-23, my hope is that you take these newfound skills and not only apply them in the workplace, but also introduce them to your up and coming leaders so they can benefit of your current level of knowledge and experience. These 14 days also challenge the students with an academic rigor unlike typical institutional, institutional domain, domains and they all have excelled. Well done. Now, it is my great honor to introduce our guest speaker, Sir Major LaVon D. Brown. Sergeant Major Brown is currently the Support Operations Sergeant Major for the 593rd Sustainment Command. He has served the Army as a Transportation Coordinator since 1993, serving in every leadership position from squad leader to battalion command Sergeant Major. He's a graduate of Sergeant Major Academy, Class 66. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Sergeant Major LaVon D. Brown. All right, good, um, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Outstanding. I'm gonna forget some of the, the announcements since um, the deputy did a great job of make sure we acknowledge everybody on, on ground. Um, but I do wanna make sure I do acknowledge the ESC Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Scarborough. Also wanna recognize also uh, look like Command Sergeant Major Martinez and Sergeant Major Jocks. So welcome, thank you. Um, command teams, Friends and families of the MLC class here, facilitators that put on such a great program that's actually outstanding in preparing our students for the next step in their career. Um, I cannot say more than, uh, thank you more than enough for what you're doing. I, I had a question that was presented to me yesterday when I had a chance to meet with the class, and it was a great question as it came to me asking me, what do I contribute to my success or success in the roles I've been as in the senior leader role? And it took me a quick minute, not long, to really see that I contribute my successes to, as a senior leader, as in my engagement with people. And I think I wrapped it up with that. And this was, I know the CSA says, the, ch the chief staff of the Army says, people first. Well, I've been living that my whole career. I always put people first. I always have and I always will. I always put my soldiers first. I always want to make sure that I'm taking care of them and their families because if I take care of them, they would take care of me. So my audience that I'm talking to, please understand if I direct a little more to the MLC class, but this is also tidbits for my leaders I have in the audience as well. But this right now, I'm going to try to project towards this class because I like to leave a little bit of tidbits with them that they can use in their future career. Because when I take this uniform off, nobody want to listen to me then. I'm just old leather guy. I'm wearing all the pins and stuff on my beret, driving an Uber van, trying to take people somewhere. They don't want to listen to you then. So let me get it out right now, all right? So let's start with this. It's about winning hearts and minds. If you win their heart and their mind, their butts are going to come. The rest of them will come. They will come joyfully to come be with you as their leader. Because they see you as that servant leader. They see that you put them first. They see that you are all about their welfare. Soldiers can see sincerity a mile away. They can read genuineness. If you're just lip syncing it and you're just doing it and you're a nine to five leader, they look, your soldier's gonna pick up on it just like that. And what you're gonna do, you won't get buy-in. And I was a little bit of the conversation we had yesterday class is you want that buy-in from your soldiers. Because once again, if they're on board, it's nothing that your organization cannot accomplish. The limit for many of us that we face and will face as leaders that our soldiers have been through and continue to go through so much change and upheaval that they are questioning whether they have the motivation and desire to continue with the organization, continue with the Army, and even continue pushing forward. To be successful, it is imperative that leaders create a culture of motivation, a spirit of core, and excitement which is achieved through engagement with your soldiers and your organization, within your organization. I want to share with you what I credit towards my successful career in the Army and hope you can apply it toward your career. I have three points I'm going to share with you today about engagement and then three steps that I used that was used by me as a leader that has worked very successful for me. The first point, when focusing on engagement, it's important to focus on understanding who the organization really, well, 
It's important to understand who in the organization is really ready and who, who may need some help moving forward. You got some people who are going to report to you they're ready to execute, ready to do everything you got to do. But some of them you got to toe along and you got to recognize them, but you got to treat them all the same. During these times, during times like this, a certain pattern of behavior sets into many organizations. Generally, leaders create a strategy are living in the future. We're so focused so far ahead that we don't realize our soldiers are living in the now. They're living in the present. What are you doing for me now? Not what we're going to do down the road. They are looking at the next quarter's time frame. Soldiers' primary function in the present, and they're concentrating on accomplishing the key tasks of day-to-day -day missions that we ask our soldiers to do. Many soldiers find it difficult to shift into the mindset of future strategy, and they need time to process. Point two, it's important to understand when we, what we mean by engagement. Energy, not time. You can spend count, countless hours with a soldier, but if it's not quality and there's no energy behind it, then you're just really wasting your time. It is the currency of engagement. Engagement is a combination of perception of change, the events happening around you, and the level of energy experience. So highly engaged people have positive perception on change going on around them, and they put a high level of energy into their work and everything else they do. And then the last point is, the purpose of a leader is to engage others in committing their full energy to the creation of value and success. Buy-in. Getting those soldiers to come on board. Getting those family members to support that soldier in what the organization purpose is and the direction they're going. But no matter how strong a leader you are, you cannot change soldiers. They have to make the choice to change themselves. You're going to have three types of soldiers that you'll be facing during this choice. You're going to have those soldiers that going to be proactive, you got those soldiers that are reactive, and you got those soldiers that are going to be inactive. Let's talk about the proactive ones. The proactive soldiers are fully committed. They're participating in all the activities. They're willing to comply with the organizational decision. They're set in motion. They are in that proactive state. When people are resistant to change and they grudgingly comply, and some soldiers, you got to realize, some of them only do it to get even. Some of them, I will accomplish your mission just because you said I couldn't do it. Or, that, well, you know what, you don't tick me off, so I'm going to do it my way, and it's really a get, a, a get even mentality that they're moving forward, but they're looking at the first opportunity that they're going to disrupt this train that's moving on this track. These people can act as deterrence to an organization growth and progress. And those who step back and wait and see, you have those two. Well, let's wait and see what's going to happen. Let's see who else is going to get on board. And those people pretend to comply. They are disengaged entirely, or they, and what I call it, they're in an the inactive state. They also can be harmful effects to advancing your strategy. The three steps I'm going to close out with in telling you how do you get after this. But first of all, to get started, here are three steps that you can take today that you can take today or you can follow today that's going to help you become the leader that you want to be in dealing with these, so helping these soldiers make these choices. First of all, demonstrate a clear commitment. You as a leader cannot be the wishy-washy one. You can't be on both sides of the fence. You cannot straddle the fence. We'd rather you take a stand and pick a side, at least we'll know where you're at. That shows commitment. The second thing, be a positive role model. For beliefs, practices, customs, behaviors, you want all your soldiers to exhibit in their interaction with one another in their day-to-day -day activity. Everything you want your soldier to be, then you need to be. Don't ask them to be what you know you are not. Don't say do, don't do as I say, not as I do. And then last but not least, encourage all soldiers to understand and share those same beliefs and behaviors and coach them. Coach, mentor, train. It is important that you reach out not just to the soldiers, but you have to go that one step farther and go one level deeper. A happy soldier has a happy home. If a, happy home, if a home is happy, then that soldier is happy. How can we ask our soldiers to do certain things when we haven't took the level to find out where they're at in their home life? Or maybe they don't have a home life, maybe they're a barracks soldier. How are they, dealing in the, how are they doing in the barracks? How, how often are we in, engaging in soldiers who don't have a wife, who doesn't have a spouse, who does not have a husband, are we asking those questions, how are your parents? What's the dynamics of your family? We have to understand where they're coming from so we can know what they're going to be for us. The culture of the organization will happen whether you influence it or not. And as you move your organization through these new exciting times, are you willing to run the risk that your soldier's behavior is less than or not what you need it to be? Are you a leader? Are you going to be a leader actively involved in establishing a culture of engagement? If not, you need to be. 
And you start by setting the example. Train to lead, lead the train, live the standard, rest assured. During the course, each student was evaluated on their abilities, aptitude, performance, and potential to serve in positions of greater responsibility. At this time, Master Sergeant Morales will be joined by Sergeant Major Brown and First Sergeant Fry to present awards and coins to the NCOs that excelled during this course with special honors. To earn the title of Distinguished Honored Graduate, the student must have the highest grade point average far exceed core standards and achieve superior ratings in both attributes and competencies. The Distinguished Honor Graduate for Master Leader Course Class 003-23 is Star First Class Joshua Martin. He will receive an Academy Coin of Excellence, a graduation diploma, and a Certificate of Achievement. To earn the title of honor graduate, the student must have the second highest grade point average in class, far exceed core standards, and achieve superior ratings in both attributes and competency. The honor graduate for master leader course, class 003-23, is Star First Class Jonathan Boynton. He will receive an academy coin, a graduation diploma, and a certificate of achievement. The following senior non-commissioned officers graduated in the top 20% of their class and placed on the Commandant's list. They far exceeded core standards and achieved superior ratings in both attributes and competencies. Sergeant First Class Haven Smith. Sergeant First Class Michael Wanner. Please join me in a round of applause for these outstanding non-commissioned officers. The following senior non-commissioned officers graduated in the top 40% of their class and placed on the superior academic achievement list. They far exceeded core standards and achieved superior ratings in both attributes and competencies. Master Sergeant Formica Griffin. Sergeant First Class John Roadwall. Sergeant First Class Stella Bergner. Sergeant First Class Chantra Yorth. Please join me in a round of applause for these outstanding non-commissioned officers. The following senior non-commissioned officers successfully achieved course standards and completed all master leader course requirements. They will now receive their diplomas. Sergeant First Class Rodolfo Acosta. Sergeant First Class, Linwood Cook. Sergeant First Class, Stephen Dunham. Sergeant First Class, Lakeisha Jones. Sergeant First Class, Benjamin Kroll. Sergeant First Class, Philip Manuel. Sergeant First Class, Arby Melendrez. Yeah. Sergeant First Class, Clovis Polk III. Yeah. Sergeant First Class, Ryan Pruitt. Yeah. Sergeant First Class, Brian Reber. Yeah. Sergeant First Class, Meliza Rodriguez. Sergeant First Class, Jacob Stewart. Sergeant First Class, Charles Taylor. And Sergeant First Class, Robert Thompson.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor that we present to you the graduates of the Master Leader Course, Class 003-23. The distinguished honor graduate will now present the guest speaker, Sergeant Major Brown, with a certificate of appreciation. On behalf of Master Elite Sergeant Major, on behalf of Master Leader Course 003-23, we thank you for your words of wisdom and encouragement. Train to lead, lead to train, live the standard. 